What's up ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. We're doing another gigalog today, but I am actually not going to be the DJ. The DJ, you, well you guys probably already saw from the title, the DJ today is going to be none other than Jason Janai. And he also brought Jeff, Jeff Sock Gold with him. We're going to need to get a picture that you guys will probably see in the thumbnail. But we're out at the roof in Charlotte, North Carolina. It's only an hour 20 for me. This was a really cool collab. Just uh, Jana hit me up last year about doing this. Need a gear, you know, of course. Throwing a wedding today for uh, local DJ Donnie. This is a very new venue. And just giving you guys a little back tour, this venue is, I, I will say it again, I love when venues do it right. And this venue is no exception. It is just done beautifully. They have this awesome back area back here. You're gonna be able to do ceremonies. It's a beautiful day. Um, it is March. Normally that could be cold, that could be rainy, that could be hot, you never know. But today it is beautiful. It's like 62 degrees outside. They got a cool spot for the bar here. And uh, inside there's some cool features to show you. Just up lighting DJ Booth. He's gonna be using my furniture today. And um, cold sparks. Here's a little inside the venue. 180 guests I believe. A lot of people today. That bar is sick. We did bring the big boy speakers today as well. We got the JBL VRX 918s, SRX 815 tops. Plenty of volume to work with today. You know, whenever you're working with other DJs, and especially when the wedding is for a DJ, you wanna make sure the sound is on point. So instead of bringing the Maui 44s, even though the Maui 44 G2s would have been perfect for this, we brought overkill. We just unloaded everything and we're trying to understand the layout because you know, this is not my wedding, it's Jan I's wedding, and I don't necessarily know where we're setting up or how we're doing the setup. So I'm trying to figure all that out um, before we start putting gear where it needs to go. A little progress update. Check out this backdrop though. And yes, Jan is bringing his own for this. What's up everyone, all set up, ready to go. I think my man's actually walking right right back there right now. What's up, what's up, what's up? What's up? Oh, it's like a little one of these. <laughs> JSG as always. We all set up and ready to rock and roll. Same setup as always, if you guys know. Rain 12s, S9. We did bring out the VRX and the SRXs today, a little bit louder. Look at that camera craziness. The room flip going down right now. We flipping the room, getting her all ready to go. Jan and I getting warmed up. After the event, and um, I thought, what better way to end the event than uh, me and my man Jason here jump on a little Zoom call because you know we both live extremely busy lives, and Jenna was literally popping right out of here, flying right back home home the next morning at the crack of dawn to get back on to more events and more awesome stuff up there in New Jersey. So Jan, I thanks for popping on here and doing a little outro take with me. Dude, I appreciate everything. I appreciate getting the opportunity to kick it with you. I appreciate the production support. I 
appreciate the conversations and, and and just I appreciate doing this. We had a good time. We had a good time. What what'd you think of the party? I I mean I, I got I got my take on it, but I I think that was pretty lit. That was pretty fun. I was gonna say they came to get down. You know, it was such an interesting, diverse group there being, you know, when you work for another DJ, I think that's one thing. When you work for yeah. an event someone in the event world that's another thing when you combine them both and then you add like a destination twist to it and you know there's just a lot of different influences in, in, from a music perspective into the overall day but they definitely came to get down and i think we all made that happen for them and i was definitely uh i was pumped with how it all flowed out from dinner to the dancing to even the close out at the very end it was a, it was a real good time yeah i never preferenced in the video but or except for donnie i preferenced the groom was a dj but his wife now is also a wedding planner so you got wedding industry all up in there um all of the family and friends that came were basically photographers djs other wedding vendor network people everyone that was there knew what's up when it comes to the wedding scene they definitely um, had it was definitely a little bit it wasn't like a normal like i don't want to say i shouldn't say normal that's not right it wasn't like a a blended family members that are not like in tune with like the wedding business as a whole like everybody comes from within for the most part or was part of the groom you know produces these like or has produced these like festival shows and i think that's like another thing too you had like a number of like club guys there a number of people that play in the nightlife scene and also like the festival scene and it's just pretty cool so i gotta ask you because honestly i feel like in our industry you're almost like the master of dj booth you have like a million of them yeah so what'd you think of the dj rick webb custom built booth that you got to play on the whole night you know what? I, I actually really liked it. You did a great job building it out. And to be honest with you, I've used a very similar booth in a different way. Uh, and we could even throw one of the pictures of this booth up on the screen just so everyone can see one of the booths that I created uh, some time ago. And I haven't used it for a couple of different reasons, mainly because it's so big and it's so like difficult to, you know, to carry around. The thing weighs a couple hundred pounds and, you know, it's like a nine foot long case that it travels in. But I really loved playing on your booth and being like that close to the crowd. I think that that was so cool. And I I have, I think I have 12 or 13 different types of DJ booths right now that I offer my couples to choose from when they're like booking me locally or like within my region where I can actually drive to and provide the production support. But I really liked the height. I liked the layout. I liked how the 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 laptop stand was like rock solid and i think you just did a great job thinking out how you were going to use it and then made it all work within that little footprint that actually looked really pretty and i, I thought it did a great job you know i haven't played on s9 in a little minute in a minute too so it was cool to like get back on that because i've been using the s11 for a little while now but you know it's it's all good digging up some history i love it that s11 has a lot of features that i feel like if i, I started playing on it i'd go back to the s9 and be like oh all this stuff's still here you know what i hate to say it but like i don't even use it for all of the features like i use the screen oh, yeah. as a visual cue so i don't have to sometimes look over like like where I'm at in the song or am I playing on the first cue or am yeah. I jumping to the next? But, you know, um, I was terrified to even try stems with the S9 because I didn't I haven't gotten a chance to use it at all. So, like, I didn't really do too much with stems over the course of the wedding where on the S11, I'm very familiar with it on my own gear. So everything's kind of like mapped in and, and all did and all working. So it was cool to just keep it like OG original and give them a little, little flavor and a constant, you know, a constant flip of everything. I feel like if you guys don't know, Jason filmed a lot of content on his side, actually even more than I have in this gig log. And they have their Jeff Scuggles there and like going crazy with the camera set up and they had the audio, they had Jan, I mic'd up the whole time. That is honestly, I was very blown away with the kind of the concept of like having you mic'd up the whole time and then Jeff just running around with the camera shooting content and then in the back end syncing all that in together. And I was telling my team on my side, that's a cool idea to like really up our content game when it comes to collecting media from these weddings and these events. I've been a big fan of capturing media like since day one. I mean, I feel like I started doing like behind the scenes, you know, party footage back before it was cool and, and before a lot of people did it. Um, and over the years, we've continued to kind of 
challenge our team to just think outside the box. And over the past like two or three years, we started to realize that we needed to differentiate our videos from a lot of other videos that are flying around on the tube of you. And um, some of the conversations that can be had during or at the end of, or in the middle of a wedding, in my opinion, are like the gold parts of a wedding. Like how you deal with the situation with like someone asking for something and you're like, wait, what? Or how do you Absolutely. deal with just the, 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 the conversation conversations that take place and for people that are looking to climb up the performance ladder in this industry and they're looking to do more they're looking to kind of continue to grow and to offer production you know there's a lot of things that happen behind the scenes that until you're in those situations like it's almost hard to explain so like when you can actually just share the content like real real time in video i feel like it helps enhance the uh, the video itself. It makes it a little bit more interesting for people to watch, you know, on, on, on platforms like this. And I don't have a ton of videos like that right now, but we've been capturing and mm -hmm. just trying to refine the way that we capture our content. So a mic on the DJ or the host, you know, throughout the whole course, setting up, lining up people, all of that kind of stuff. Now, the one thing about this event specifically in a typical Jason Janai wedding experience, like you would have three people with, I'd have two people alongside. I'd have a support DJ and I'd have a media person. And then we'd have like production support beyond that, right? So, you know, this is not something that like, we managed it for this event with just two of us, right? Um, even though you were providing production support, yep. like I didn't want to lay any of that lifting on you guys, but you know, um, with Jeff yeah. being able to bounce between both roles, like you can only do so much. So, you know, at the end of the wedding, we didn't capture like the send off in a context of me, like orchestrating anything in terms of whatever we have some clips, we have some different pieces, but you know, we had to like use what we, what we could when we can get it. Because once the party took off, it was really challenging to like have someone do two roles at the same time. You know, when you get into like advanced lever level of capture where you're m multiple streams of audio in, I love having the real audio that people can hear. I love having audio that's from a mic and I love having another source, which is a direct out from the mixer. I feel like that gives you the ability to create a lot of like really cool content, you know, and you can, as you edit, you could shift back between the different sources if you need to, you know, next level stuff, to be honest, it, that is some crazy stuff. So yeah, I will preference at this point that if you guys, when we launch this gig log, uh, I'll also be linking Jan and I's down below, or just go search up Jason Janai on YouTube. You need to check out his channel. He's posting a lot of gold nugget tips when it comes to business related stuff in the industry, how to become a better DJ, um, I've been taking some notes. He's been schooling me a little bit on some items because I'm trying to nice. grow as well. So highly recommend you guys go check out the channel, check out the gig log to see a secondary point of view of everything that took place. And uh, I just realized you mentioned the send off. I didn't even capture send off footage in this. So if you guys want to go check out the send off with four cold spark fountains and a uh, what what was the car they they rode off it was, on? That it was like that, a nineteen like, fifties Rolls uh, Royce or something, right? Rolls Royce, yeah, car. yeah. Super sick car, super sick car. Oh my god, just smells like straight gas when it's running. Just old school, <laughs> man. Um, that was crazy. Was you cool. gotta go check out. Just go check out his gig log for that, Jason. One more question, and this is kind of a point we talked about during the show, and you brought it up to me there on the back end about the actual concept of the DJ network and having friends and allies, not only across the nation, but in every single city you go to in your local city. We talked about why this is important, especially for your event, but it extends even further when it comes to local events as well. When it comes to having access to gear that you might not normally have or taking on bigger events that you can't normally do by yourself or just filling calendars, having allies and network help in a local scenario, or in this case, where you're flying across the country to other events and DJing awesome parties and all you bring is your laptop. <laughs> yeah. You know, I feel like that's something that a lot of people miss, especially when they're just coming up in the business. You know, I understand how sometimes you can kind of feel like you're on your own. You're only, you know, you're in your lane and only your lane, but I've always been a big supporter of having relationships with friends and people in this industry, especially you know, if you, if you see that they're kind of like on the same level as you, at least you, you might have the same views, you might use the same gear, whatever, whatever the, whatever the path is. And I think, you know, this is a great example of that, you know, like 
a lot of times people say, Jason, like, well, how did you, you did a party in North Carolina? You're from New Jersey. Did you like bring your own stuff there? And like the answer is no, we were paid to come down there to do this event. But when we arrive on site, we had to find a production resource. And rather than going to like, just a like a big box, you know, like entity in the area, I rather lean on someone that I trust, someone that I respect and someone that I know can deliver. And that's like the relationship part of this. And whether you're going across the country or to another market or to another city, or if you're in your own market, but maybe one of your couples wants a service that you don't have, or maybe like you have already reserved on one event, but you have the ability of doing a second event, you know, having relationships with people that can either assist you, or maybe you can point work to in the event that you're not booked might happen the other way to you. You know, having relationships is so big in this industry. And it's something that I wish I did more of when I was younger in this business, but I can tell you like one of the biggest entities I know in this industry is Mike Walter and he, his office is less than five miles of mine. And we are in the same County, the same area, but there's enough work for all of us. And when I'm extended, I send stuff to him. And when they're extended, they still send stuff to me. If I'm in a jam, I might reach out to Mike. If he's in a jam, he might reach out to me. And this is the, benefit of 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 being a solid person in this industry and i think the benefit of of having mm -hmm. you know great relationships with people just like you and i you know like i was down i'm like who's in charlotte oh rick is he's he might not be in charlotte but he serves charlotte so it's like let me reach out to him he's in north carolina do. <laughs> yeah like he can get there we can do this you know and and, and we're good so I'm, i, I exactly. don't know if that if that kind of answers it but i just think having relationships is such an important part of 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 i think doing things in this industry especially if you plan on doing this for a long time like the more relationships you have in the more places, the more reach that you have, I feel like the stronger and more confident you can be. Right now I'm working on an event for Nick um, and he's doing it in Cabo. And like, we're having to source all the stuff down there. And I have a relationship with the company, but it's a bigger box company that serves like the audio visual and like DJ gear rentals. And it's just a different experience dealing with just like a contract in and out, as opposed to like calling someone up and be like, yo bro, I got this thing. Like, can we do this? And like, like then you have the ability of even doing a collaboration. Like we kind of did on this event where it's like, you know, not only mm -hmm. did you help me with that stuff, but like we got to hang out, we got coffee, we had some food earlier in the day, like we got to kick it and then we got to chill a little bit at the end and, you know, it was just awesome. So I think it's a win-win if, you, if you're able to exactly. do that in your market. Exactly. And when you have buddies, like you just said right there, um, for the extent of our prior conversations leading up to the thing was like, what do you need? Oh, Cold Sparks DJ. Oh yeah, no problem. We got that. And then like the week up, we're like, yeah, we need what? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. We got that. We got that. We'll take care of it. No problem. It's so funny. <laughs> we, like we I'm don't really so... care about the details. We just got it. I'm, I'm telling you, like, I'm so granular, so particular with like the stuff, the like all the things like up here, I'm like double checking, crossing the T's, dotting the I's. I mean, Rick, you can co-sign this right now, but I mean, it was like a week before I'm like, oh shit, did I pay you? Like, did I even send you? Like, did I take care of this? Like, I totally forgot. Like, that's how I think lax it was, but in a good way. Like you had it on your calendar. I had it on my calendar, like agreed on it. Like, I know you sent me stuff. Like I just, it wasn't that I wasn't being careful with it. I just trusted it was going to be done because like- We just you, knew. We just knew. I, it. Yeah. It's yeah. like we- we Rep you know, Reputation. We, it's It's it, trust. Just makes it so much easier to I do think, work. I think you contacted you know? me like so. This this wedding it was in uh, March, and you con I think you contacted me like September about. It. I just put down all the initial details, sent him an invoice, and then uh, I ran into him at the collective, and I had it on like, hey, are we still doing that event in March? I didn't even ask him. We were like in a conversation together and he mentioned that he's coming down in March. And I was like, okay, say cool. It's still in the books. Let me make sure that's taken care of. <laughs> and it's so funny. I'm going through. I'm like, yeah, no. oh. I'm like, oh wait, I don't know if I paid for this yet. I'm like, Rick, send me an invoice. He sent me an invoice. And I, I didn't just do like the deposit. I was like, I did the deposit and then I did the final like right away. Like, cause I just, I was so like the benefit of, yeah. of working with someone that you know, and someone that you have a relationship with. And I think, you know, for any DJ that's watching this, if you are kind of like keeping your, your, your cards close to your chest and you're, and you're not opening up to, to, to build on relationships with 
that you that you that you could have with people in your immediate area or within an expanded area or even on the other side of the country i would just tell you from experience i've been doing this a long time i've done events that i'm super proud of i've done some of the biggest events in our industry like not just once but numerous times and I've done a lot of things that I'm super proud of. I, I think that's the the caveat here. And it's yeah. if I look at it all, it all, you know, the relationship game is is so, so, so strong. So anyway, I would say if you're someone watching this and you're looking to build, you're looking to 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 get to the next level, you're looking to expand on what you're doing, what you have going on in your market, you have to work on your relationships. That's the the takeaway here. Relationships are everything in this industry. And you never know when you may need someone's help or you know, you might need a hand and doing something and and relationships will help make it a lot exactly. easier i promise you that and, and this extremely applies to your local network if if you get in with multiple dj companies multiple other djs single op djs in your local area and you guys are all friends and work together anybody that tries to not work with you is is not going to last because you guys together are going to be so strong and control so much market. You guys are going to be able to push the boundaries of what we're able to charge, push the presentation and what people expect. All good things can happen from networking. If you're holding it to yourself, you're going to hinder your progress in this industry. But yeah, Jana. It's so true. This, 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 this event was one for the books in terms of just the collaboration, um, the people involved from the couple, just they went all out. It was a great party. Um, it was so much fun. It was all over. It was it was good to kick it with you. And, and I just appreciate this and everything. I mean, it was a little bit of EDM, a little bit of pop rock, a little bit of to throw back hip hop, a little bit of funk soul. We had an active dinner, mm -hmm. you know, set where I didn't stop. And I was like doing classic rock and, you know, all stuff that's current and everything in between. I mean, we literally were all over the place the entire night and it was just it was awesome so thank you guys go check out jana make sure you go to his youtube channel hit the subscribe button if you don't follow him on instagram follow him up on instagram go follow se event group so you can learn all about what all, all they do for couples all across the world practically at this point but yeah thank you guys so much for watching the video jana thank you so much for being a part of the video and just like pretty much putting this whole thing together in this in a way and yeah like comment subscribe and we'll see you guys in the next one um, keep them record spinning. Peace. Thanks.